very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I was not expecting to say something today. I said that I should sit and listen and learn, and there's a lot I've learned this morning. I must begin, first of all, by thanking Sam, Sam for the very kind words, because there are very few people, and I mean this when I say, there are very few people in this world who think like this man you see here called Sam from MasterCard. When they came to talk to me first time about this change, I think I was head of the Private Sector Foundation of Uganda. And I've met so many different groups of well-meaning people, especially from the first world. They come and they want to make a difference. They will come and they want to have social impact. So mainly from America and from Europe. We talk to them, but in my lifetime, the last 30 years at least, very little impact has come. Why do I say this? I recall when AIDS hit Uganda, and we turned around. We didn't know what to do. And nearly every family lost somebody. And we looked left and looked right. Then the president of America at the time, President Bush, set up the PEPFA fund. They couldn't cure AIDS, but they'd give us medicines to keep our brothers and sisters sustainable, alive. And that fund, until today, the biggest donations that come to Uganda through that Gavi fund have made a very big difference in the lives of so many people. To me, that was a fantastic humanitarian act done by the Americans. And I will always say that because many of us take it for granted. But without that intervention, we would not be where we are today. Now, when it came to jobs, we had moved on 25 years. And I could look around me. My life has changed so much in the last 30 years. But I look at so many young people, and they are beginning to lose hope, completely lose hope. And we see this challenge of the fast-growing, young, youthful population, full of energy, but many of them are getting misguided. Then I met Sam Adela. We sat and talked. And I thought, yeah, I brushed it off. They said, we want you to come. We talked, and I was passionate about what I mean, about how we can change people's lives. He said, I want you to come to Canada. Me? I've traveled the world, but I've never been to Canada. Canada to me is very far. It's cold most of the year. Yeah, good things about them. They are nice people, but that's about it. I said, I'll come. I'll think about it. Then, oh, time came. I don't have a visa. They insisted. We're postponing the meeting. We want you to come. And they now chose a group of Ugandans to come with me. I said, what's wrong with these people? We'll send you a business class ticket. We'll send you a... I said, I don't need your ticket. But we want you to come. Eventually, I mustered the courage. I got on a plane to Canada. Then I sat in a room with these amazing people, just as passionate. Like there are six or eight, maybe ten people. They had a big office, back office, but the room we sat with, they are saying, how can we solve your problems in Africa? First I was skeptical. You can't. Then they said that we have a war chest. We've been researching, and we are very determined, and now we have zeroed in in Uganda. We are coming to Uganda. We want to create three million jobs. We'll begin with 300,000. We'll break it down. These people blew me away. They changed my perspective. Like how when you come from being a non-Christian, now becoming a Christian. That's how I changed from darkness to light. They were so determined to come here. I was fired up. We spent two days locked up in rooms, or three days locked up in rooms, and I got back on a plane to come here. My life was changed then. It was no longer about me or my businesses. But how can we change this trajectory? And I started knocking on the doors, Prime Minister, His Excellency the President, the First Lady, to get this message across. Everybody was listening. But like me, mm, we've had these stories before. Is this going to happen? This man got on a plane, came here, set up office, and said, let's begin looking for the right partners. We're going to make this difference. What a wonderful man this guy is. Please. Okay. There are good people out there. We have been waiting for Jesus to come back. Jesus may not come back in our lifetime. But some people are going to come and we're going to change this world. But we need to work with them. It's us to make the effort. Others, we can have these beautiful workshops, talk, 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 touch a few people's lives. One year they're in business, next year they're out. No, that won't work. We need to move the needle, really to move the needle. We need socioeconomic transformation. If we don't, we've got a problem. We're sitting on a time bomb. These countries that you see have gone into civil disruption, cannot be organized. That's coming for sure. Because the youth, when we now we are at 40 million, 50 million, 25 years from here will be 100 million. 
and that will be a lot harder to manage. So I call upon you to call on your MPs, to call on your local leaders, to call on your religious leaders to get together in this new crusade. It doesn't take away from the other crusade that was brought by Christianity or Islam. This is a new crusade of creating jobs. We've got to stem the hemorrhage of these young people going on these flights at night to Dubai, to Saudi Arabia. It's better than the West Africans who are trying to go across the Mediterranean and are dying every day. But we've got to do something different today. In the first world, in America, in UK, I know that the banks are lending money. The London inter-borrowing rate, LIBOR, is below 1%. Here it's at 18%. Which young guy can start a business at 18% and pay it back? We've got to fix these problems. I was talking with Sam this morning. How do we fix the element of trust? There is no trust in our society. And a society cannot grow without the element of trust. That's the glue that holds us together. We don't trust the banks, they don't trust us. We don't trust the government, they, doesn't tr they don't trust us. We don't trust one another. We are going to be like cockroaches in a bucket. We've got to change the trajectory. Before, there was no infrastructure. There were no roads, there was no electricity. So you talk about good ideas, but it wouldn't happen because you didn't have the power. You couldn't create factories, you couldn't create the jobs. Today, most of the roads have been built nearly every part of this country. Electricity is going to most places. So now we can do the thing about moving human capital in the right direction. We have plenty of land, fertile soils, good weather, gifted by nature, but we are still so poor. When you see countries like Japan, a country with no resources, Korea, South Korea, no resources, but see how powerful they are. They invested in their human capital. We need to do something. Farming is a fantastic business, and I urge those who are in farming to continue. We need to increase our production and productivity. Farming is like a mother as an industry. It will never say no. St. Bernardo's home. All of you, you are welcome. Come, come, come. But very many of you will remain in poverty. We need to get people doing business, to think agribusiness, to do value addition. That's how we shall change the people in our society. This community will not be lifted until we do things better. I am so grateful to NSSF. They are sitting on a huge pot of money, but they cannot move it on their own. You need to put pressure on your MPs because it affects parliament. They'll pass legislation. They'll get out of the strict jacket they're in. They can only do this and that. Give them more latitude. If they do that, more people create jobs. Those people all will register for NSF. Save with NSF. The pot gets bigger and they can help more people. It will become a vicious, a virtuous circle. The same with URA. We've got to get these government bodies to trust us and we work with them. And young businesses, we, would, we should be supporting them. Not just with money, but mentoring them, training them, seeing the pitfalls. Because there are so many pitfalls. I tell people, business is extremely hard. People think business is easy, and especially at graduation, they are telling all the young people to go and start businesses. They are just throwing them into the sea. Business can be fantastic. You must be passionate. You must follow your talent. But it's hard, and there are many pitfalls. And you're going to fall down, but be ready to pick yourself up and, and, and run. When you go to play rugby, you don't say, I'm not going to fall down, not fight with somebody. You prepare for rugby. That's how business is, and it's a great game, rugby. Me, I'm a small guy, but I'm a great rugby player in business. <laughs> I thank you all. I thank NSF and all the partners.